when people think of Wyatt Earp, they think of the Wyatt Earp they see in the movies. There's a lot of glitz and glamour surrounding the infamous Wyatt Earp. His life has been portrayed in many movies and TV shows. The images most people have of Wyatt and his good friend Doc Holliday come from Hollywood. When most people think of Wyatt Earp, they think of his wild exploits in Tombstone, and the shootout at the OK Corral with his rivals, the Clantons and McLaurys. He's usually thought of as your typical cowboy, riding horses, frequenting saloons, participating in gunfights, and getting into trouble. Wyatt Earp's wild lawman days are widely known, but it wasn't just what people see in the movies. In a letter to a friend he wrote a few years before his death, Wyatt Earp wrote, During the past few years, many wrong impressions of the early days of Tombstone and myself have been created by writers who are not informed correctly, and this has caused me concern which I feel deeply. While many know of his time spent in Tombstone and Dodge City, many people don't know that Wyatt Earp spent a great amount of his life right here in San Bernardino. In 1864, Nicholas Porter Earp had grown tired of his surroundings in Pella, Iowa, he had as much of an adventurous spirit as any of his sons after him. Because of this, he decided to move his family out to California. Nick, as he was called, had passed through San Bernardino on his way home from prospecting. Nick, his wife Virginia Ann Cooksey Earp, and their younger children Jim, Morgan, Warren, Adelia, and of course, Wyatt all made the trip from Iowa to California and finally settled in San Bernardino. The first time Wyatt Earp stepped foot in San Bernardino, he was just about 16 years old. Nick and Virginia Ann's other son, Virgil, was still serving in the Union Army and did not make the trip out to San Bernardino until later. Nick Earp rented a farm near what is now Redlands and enlisted his boys to help him run it. But as most people know, Wyatt was not cut out to be a farmer, and neither were his brothers. The Earp boys soon left home and began traveling all around the West. Left without his sons to help him on the farm, Nick took his wife Virginia Ann and the two youngest children, Warren and Adelia, and left California for a while. However, the Earp clan came back to California, where they settled in Colton. Nick would eventually go on to become the Justice of the Peace in that area in 1884. But Nick Earp would leave his mark on San Bernardino in a much more important way. In 1888, Nick became a charter member of the San Bernardino Historical Society of California Pioneers and later served as its president. This group of fur trappers, miners, and war veterans eventually became the San Bernardino Historical Society we know today. Because most of the attention has been given to Wyatt, many people are unaware of the adventures of his brothers James, Virgil, Morgan, and Warren. In Tombstone, Wyatt isn't the only herb taking part in gunfights. Wyatt's brothers, Virgil, Jim, and Morgan, were also in Tombstone during the celebrated shootout with the Clantons and McLaurys. In his book, The Earth Clan, The Southern California Years, Nick Cataldo wrote, Virgil was the acknowledged leader of the brothers and chief of police in Tombstone during the O.K. Corral fiasco. After his left elbow was nearly blown away in a retaliated shotgun ambush by members of the Clanton slash McLaurie gang and the ensuing assassination of Morgan, Virgil was sent back to his parents' home in Colton. Following the shootout, youngest brother Morgan was murdered. He is buried in Colton. In 1886, two years after Nicholas Earp became Justice of the Peace, Virgil Walter Earp became Constable of Colton. He would later go on to serve as Colton's first marshal in 1887. Virgil Earp's home is still standing in Colton. The youngest of the Earp boys, little brother Warren, missed the shootout in Tombstone that led to Brother Morgan's death. However, Warren eventually made his way to Tombstone to join a posse led by older brother Wyatt and Doc Holliday to avenge Morgan's death. He eventually left the area to avoid prosecution and returned to San Bernardino. While in San Bernardino, Warren found himself getting into a lot of trouble. He frequently was involved in fights and brawls. This lifestyle eventually led to his death in 1900, when he was killed by a cowboy in Arizona. Although he traveled all around the West, the famous Wyatt Earp often stopped in San Bernardino Valley to visit his family. He and his wife Josephine Earp, also known as Sadie, eventually grew tired of roaming and settled in Vidal, California in the early 1920s. It was while living in Vidal, Wyatt Earp, the infamous wild frontier lawman, was presented with the San Bernardino County Deputy Sheriff's Badge. In 1929, at the ripe old age of 80, Wyatt Earp passed away. He was the last of the Earp brothers. There is a lot of mystery surrounding Wyatt Earp and what he was really like. His adventures have become legends, but the truth about the real Wyatt Earp is clouded. 
The time he spent in Tombstone was actually just a small portion of his life, about two years. In an interview done late in Wyatt's life, he said this of his legendary gunfight. That fight didn't take but 30 seconds, and it seems like, in my going on 80 years, we could find some other happenings to discuss.